Good day. Aussie he fun so I'll blow gear going. Uh, good day guys. Today we're going to be working on this cedar. No idea what type of cedar. I thought it was Blue Atlas but I've been told it's not. I think it could be Deodora. But anyway it doesn't matter what it is. It's the cedar. And I'm going to be working on this one. Um, so it's been a little while since I've done a video. Um, you know, I caught a cold or not, don't think it flew, but you know, caught a decent cold, had a fairly bad sore throat, um, a lot of phlegm and stuff. So I didn't want to do a video of me coughing and blowing out snot everywhere. So it's been a hot minute. Um, I'll also say that after I got better from that, I've been better for a good week. I pretty well caught the what I call the bonsai flu. <laughs> and that's when, you know, you've been watering and trimming and looking after them all summer. And it happens to me every year nearly. When they start to go to sleep in autumn, a lot of your trees don't need working on. And I just start walking past them and basically... I'm over bonsai for a little while and you know it, it seems to happen to me every year I have this sort of moment about now where I just I don't know lose interest for, for, for a month or so but anyway we'll get back at it and if I'm gonna be completely honest I'm still not fully back into it but I'm hoping working on this tree here needs a lot of work done today that it'll get me fully motivated and back into it because nothing worse than the bonsai flu. <laughs> All right, guys, so this one here is a crazy tree. There's a lot of different branches and stuff going on on it. And it's it's a bit of, gonna be a bit of a challenge for me today. Um, I've had a bit of a look at it. It's got a decent radial root base. If I repot it, at some stage I'll show you that I could possibly repot it today when I work on it not recommended but I hardly ever do what's recommended so I might even repot it at the end of today but I'm, I highly suggest if this was yours and you worked on it don't repot it and I may not repot it I'll see how I go um, but having said all that let's have a look at the tree so I'll give you guys a slow spin of the tree. Okay, so that at the moment is pretty well the front. I was going to hope for some back budding on this big straight branch here, but it didn't happen. Um, I'll give you a spin. There's also this branch here, which has some interesting structure out further, but in close there's almost nothing. Up the top here, this is the apex. This branch here is fighting for the apex and it's a long straight section there with a little bit of side shoots back here. So, see how that goes. But anyway, I'll give you a slow spin. See what you guys think. So yeah, I've just been watering and looking after them, but not, not fully motivated. I think I caught the flu, didn't work on trees for a week and a half and found myself not keen to get back to it. It happens. Okay, so that's a good spin. So as you guys can probably have imagined, I've had a bit of a look at it, had a look at the root base, I've looked at the tree. Um, um, there's probably 10 different ways, 20 different ways you could go at this tree, you could keep nearly everything. Um, bend some stuff in. I really don't think that one can stay. Um, a lot of this branch structure out here, although it's good structure, it's a long way out. And unless you make that an apex or the top of the tree, but then I don't know, these branches will be out wide and then you go straight to this at the top. It would look a bit weird as well. But good movement to that branch. Um, this one here at the top, I don't know, it looks pretty ugly. Like I say, it's too fat where it is, because you've got some nice thinner branches here, which is good for the top, and then you go straight to this long, straight, fat one. Um, I've also got a really big, strong one here. So 
So potentially that could be a leader. And the apex itself is very uninteresting. There's no taper until I get to here. So from here to here, it's all the same. I'll just bring you guys in a bit closer and try and show you. It's going to be hard because um, it just is hard to get in there to show you guys. But I'll try and show you. So I hope you can see this part here. This is the strong one that's fighting for the top. And yes, you could probably move it down in here. And bend out some branches and hide it. That would probably work fine. So that's an option. Like I say, there's a lot of options. We can bend it down. I'll probably be doing a full wire of this tree. I know I don't wire trees very often. But today it could be a wiring video. Might do some wiring. Um, so I can bend that down. Hide that fat bit. And being an evergreen. That's a, that's a good way to handle it. And I could just shape it out like that. Um, another thing I don't like is down the bottom here. If you have a look at the bottom, that there is probably the better front if I keep all this up the top. But at the bottom, you know from the side, the whole thing's just coming at you straight away at the bottom. It's better off if you can have it actually the opposite way. And have it coming away and then coming back to you so it's another small issue and you can see this big long straight branch here very ugly some of these branches this one here is a long way out up the top okay so this one here comes a long way out from the trunk so that would have to be bent down and chopped back So I've been deciding and I'm pretty set on it. I think what I might do guys is chop nearly the whole top of this tree off, run with this one here as a new leader. Then you'll have, I'll just go back a bit. Okay. So I'm thinking Definitely keep this bottom branch here, remove this back one, all this apex here will be gone, whole lot, okay, may keep it all and leave it as a deadwood feature, um, there's good movement in the trunk from this angle, if I go at a different angle like this, I hope you can see it looks very straight. So we can't go that way, can't go straight at it. And that would give us the best branch structure. But, like I say, it makes the trunk too straight, which is no good. So we're going to have to go on a bit of an angle like that. Fine for this branch, but this branch here is now too far to the back. So we're going to have to do some drastic movement or pulling around of that one. Um, and if that is the front then you'll see that you'll get movement in the trunk. The apex will come right back. And then it'll actually come back towards the viewer as well. And when I repot it, I'll repot it more and more at an angle like that. So as I work on it, I'll put a chock under there. And that's it. So let's get to cutting um, some major branches off. Let's do it. Okay guys, so the overall outline of the tree actually looks okay how it is, but like I showed you, once you get up close there is a lot of, I guess, different flaws. So, first things first, I'm going to, when I cut all this stuff off, I'm going to keep stubs and all of the branch structure in deadwood, well not deadwood, it's alive at the moment, but I'm going to keep all of that in there for now, and then reduce it back later once I decide. So this one here is coming off maybe to here for now. Just chop it off there. Okay. So that's reduced that one depth back there. Now if we keep this one here as the leader, 
It means all this other stuff's got to go. I'm not going to keep the really fine stuff out on the ends, so we'll chop that off first. Just chopping off all the green shoots for now, and we'll see how we go working some dead wood in later if, if we end up keeping some of this stuff. So this here is going to be gone, this whole apex. So you can see it just does this weird, ugly looking S. Don't really need that either. No, everything, everything on the left hand side of that apex is going to be cut. Okay. I'm just chopping it all back. I'll even keep this ugly side branch here for now. Just until we sort out what we're keeping and what we're not. There's dead wood. Okay, so we've effectively killed off the top of that tree because there's, you know, no needles left on there. Well, barely any. So you can see that was the top of the tree. And this one here, to me, looks a lot more interesting in that curve, if you can see that curve. So that's what we're going to keep. Now, let's move to this one out here. So if that's the case, let's get a wood chop. Hang on, we're going to get a wood chop. Okay, guys, so I've got some wood chops here, just some scrap bit of wood. I'm just going to lift it up on the angle that the final planting will be on, roughly, because styling it without the final planting angle is pretty hard. So let's see how we go with that. So you can see this dead stuff here. Already I can see that this straight section here is pretty ugly. It's got to go back further. Maybe even to here for now. Now. So that'll be kept. This. This here front. This, this part that's going to be bent in. You've got your back bit. Um, some branching here. Right, this one here is going to be a back branch. Now, though there's a lot of ramification back here, it's just, it's just too far back. And, you know, if you put dead wood there, that's a long way in the middle of nowhere. So, these are going to be just chopped right back, I'm afraid. We might lose some structure here, but just too far back. We've got to shorten all this. So I might even go all the way back to there and then we've got some sort of structure that we can put in there. Another branch here we can bend around. Um, a lot of that we can probably keep. Okay so I think it's probably the major cuts that I'll do for now. So you can see we got rid of the one big strong one here, shortened this back one here a lot, and cleared out that whole top section. And then here we go. Front will be somewhere in there. Okay, so next step. Oops, so next step. Okay guys, so the next step is going to be just to clean the tree out, clean out all the branches so we can wire it. Just get rid of any fluff and stuff on the inside that we 
A can't use or B it's just buds that have shot back you know back budding in really close in the crutch of the branch and we want to remove that so we can put some wire on clean out the branches all the way along so we can put some wire on cut it back to two from any one spot or location just so you've got less congestion and it's going to be easier to wire <coughs> so let's clean it right out maybe even pull out some of the needles that will get in the way of the wiring Keeping in mind, you do want to leave green on and you don't want to go too hard on it because it has going to be lost a lot of foliage by the end of all this. And you'll need some foliage to create some sort of a final image. And today won't be a full on final image that you'll see, or like it'll be styled, but as time goes on and it grows more, it will. Um, fill in and develop more is what I'm trying to say so I'm going to go ahead and clean the tree out and then get back to you Okay guys, well as you can see, we thinned it right out. Um, just want to show you guys how much we've taken off. As you can see it was extremely healthy, so I think seeing as it's so healthy, there could be a chance of a repot today. Might happen. Um, I do have something in mind for it, which is pretty cool. Possibly. We'll see how we go. But anyway, now that we've got it to this stage, it's all cleaned out. I think all the branches left here are all going to be wired and kept. I'm going to do some serious bending. Because if you have a look at a cedar in the wild, quite often they will come up at the crutch, but then they come down quite heavily and sometimes they come down right from the trunk so either way you don't really see them growing up you know like you would an Australian tree so what I'm thinking if I'm gonna have to repot this normally what I would do the reason that I'm coming and hiring and stumbling here is because normally I would put some holes in the pot back here or wherever and pull it down heavily to wherever I want it or pull it across to wherever I want it but we got a problem if I'm going to repot it I don't have that option um, because obviously you're going to repot it so I'm thinking I'm wondering whether I can put a couple of screws in the trunk and they will be strong enough to hold it I think they will these ones up the top are fine, you know, these can come down pretty easy. It's this big one here, this is actually super, super heavy to bend down. Like I'm putting maybe 10 kilo of pressure on that just to get it to move. So, pretty interesting. And this one here needs less pressure because it's further out. Um, so that one could be easier. But this one here, it's going to be a struggle. It's got to be got to be good 10, 10 to 15 kilo of pressure to put on that get it to come down so it's asking a lot from a screw in a reasonably small trunk um, but we'll see how we go anyway in the meantime what we got here is we got the top of the tree that I've killed off and a little one back here and what we're going to do is you basically ring around the bark so that it can't strip off into the bit of the trunk that you want to keep okay so that's done and then all you want to do is you want to crush it with some ginning pliers or normal pliers if you don't have ginning pliers you don't need them you can use normal just want to make sure you guys are recording because 
sometimes I'll flap on here and realize after I'm finished that no, nothing got recorded. So I think we got, you guys are, so. Right, so all we wanna do is just squeeze it a bit, soften it up, okay, and then just twist it off. Way better off doing it when it's soft like this. If you do it later, unfortunately, it's extremely hard. Another thing I will say too, if you want to, you can actually wire, not this one because that's too hard, but maybe some of these small ones, you can actually wire them if you want to reposition them. But all of these are pretty fat, and to be honest, I'll probably cut that one back further. Um, so I'm not going to have to wire the deadwood. But you can wire the deadwood because then as it dries, it sort of sets in that position. Um, so it's a really good way of being able to get deadwood to set where you want it. You can stand bend it or whatever later, but it gets a bit more complicated. So now here we've got this stub left. And all you want to do is you just want to grab it. Twist off a bit of wood. You'll feel like you're twisting off too much, generally. Generally, you'll be like, wow, I think I've just overstripped that. There's nothing left. And if you think that, well, you've probably done a good job at it because quite often people leave too much and leave it too fat on the end. And then it looks like someone come along with a chainsaw. So you want to strip it back pretty hard. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to where I'm pretty happy. Maybe one last strip on the top here. These pliers are just so good. They give you so much strength to hold it. So there you go, that one's done. Now we've got to get up to the tree. Like I say, I'll ring bark it around here. I'll leave a little bit of a stub for die back. Okay, I don't want to go right right to that branch which is now going to be the apex don't want to go to that so i'm just going to mark it back there and then same thing i'm just going to come through and squeeze it peel it just go through and do that over the whole thing so if i squeeze it like that all over that whole branch, okay, while it's nice and soft, then I can come along and just peel it off with my fingers. We get sticky fingers, but tell you what, better off doing it now than later. There's a real nice smell about it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the top bit, um, maybe off camera, but I'll meet you after that, and then we'll have to put some screws in and set the structure we'll set the main heavy structure first and then we'll start wiring out the branches so i'll do the top and then we'll get into it Okay guys, well, you've seen the deadwood get done, I decided to put that on a hyperlapse for you so you could see. Now, comes the big task. If I'm going to repot it today, I'm going to have to work out a way to pull those branches down without going on the side of the pot. So, I've got these screws, the drill. And we're gonna put some screws in and see if they hold. I don't know if they're big enough, but we'll see. Okay, so I'll put that one in here. As you can see it went in pretty easy. Go pretty close, pretty far in so that the pressure point is right on the trunk. Okay. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna do the 
opposite side. Put another one in there. If I can grab me screw. Man, I'm at a weird angle. Hang on. We got this. We got this. Oh. Okay. So we're going to try that. Put back on its stand. And we're going to try bending. So let's see how we go. Okay guys, it's going to be a pretty hard pull bend, a couple of them. Um, any more than this and you'd, I don't know, you'd have to start thinking about, like to put a fat enough wide bend this, I don't think it's possible. It's good enough with, a, with an anchor, but any more than this and you'd have to start thinking about putting some, I guess, raffia or whatever on. But, at the moment I don't think I need to. I'm pretty happy with how flexible the cedar seems to be. I may not have heavy enough guide wire here, but we'll see. Straight pull, it's probably actually quite strong. Now, Just got to work out how I'm going to do this. Right, I reckon I'll do this one to the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it underneath that screw. Hope you guys can see that. I mean, I'm single-handedly trying to muck around here. And I mean, my camera is pretty well just not that great. So let's pull down. Okay, like I say, this one here, I'm pretty happy that it's going to be okay. So I'll just pull down. I want to, I don't want to pull with this hand too much. This hand's just take up the slack. The one on the right, this hand here, I want to put all the pressure on with that so that I can feel what the branch is doing and try not to snap it because at the end of the day, snapping it is the last thing we want to do. And I'll tell you what, that sort of level downwards is probably good. I reckon I'm happy with that. And I feel like I'm stressing the branch to the max right there. So I'm going to do two loops around this screw. Okay. And then I'm going to cut it shorter. Then I'm going to wrap around this copper wire here. As you can see, that thin copper wire is actually quite strong. Okay, so that's that one down. We got one down there. This one's going to come down at the front here too. But I think we should try and do this fat one first. I'm going to spin the tree. We're going to have a look on camera to see what you guys can see. Might have to go up a bit so you can see the lag bolt. Well, sorry, Americans call it a lag bolt. It's just a bloody screw. Yeah. There we go. Now. What you got to do is be able to pull on it. The thing is, I can't pull on it from the very edge unless I get rid of this little branch here, which I suppose I could do. Okay, so let's get rid of this little branch. That way we've got this sort of knob here to work on. Another thing I will do while we're here mucking around, I might even saw... A little groove in here. Just careful for your branching. You're only creating a groove. You don't want to cut it right through. You just want to 
somewhere where it's going to stop on without sliding off. Okay. You guys can still see, I hope. Yep. Now, whether or not I get the bend I need, well, let's see. But if I don't, I can always come back another day and just give it a little bit, just tweak it a bit more. Because once these set down lower and they get sort of used to being like that, if you get what I mean, then you can um, come back, you know, a month later and just tweak them down a bit further. So if I don't get enough bend on this one today, I'm going to come back later, give it an extra tweak. We'll see how we go. See how we go. Go. So that's going to wrap around there. Hopefully fit into that little groove. I'm going to reposition myself. Now this is a pretty hard one. It's going to be hard. So again, I'm going to push down here. Wrap it around that screw. Okay. Now pushing down hand is going to do all the work. This hand is just taking up the slack. I've got to be super careful, massage it, bend it. If you massage it and bend it down a few times, until you feel like it's going to pop, relax it a bit, go a bit more. Super, super heavy branch to bend. Okay, just keep massaging it down. You can sort of feel when it's going to pop. It just wants to, it just really gets quite heavy. I hope I'm not stressing too many people out here. And what we're going to do, just wrap that around the screw. Ah, oh, it fell off, see? At least it wasn't a broken branch. <laughs> oh, had me going for a second. Had me going. Let's try it again. Just push it on a bit better. Had me going. Okay. We got us. We got a good bend on that, really. So we're gonna try again. Just carefully, carefully massage it down. Going. Going. All right. Now let's try and keep that there. Yes. Okay, so we're around that screw. Whereas Americans say lag bolt. And it's still trying to unwind. So I'm going to still hold it as I cut that bit of wire. And until you get twist on there, there's that much tension on there that it's still trying to unwind. I reckon I would have put over, well over 15 kilo of pressure on that, maybe 20. Um, but super happy with the result. Got a good bend on it. So we're back to the front. Oops, tripping over stuff here. Come back to the front. You can see we got some good bends down on them and that's how the cedar seems to grow so I'm happy to do a tree and fully wire it out for something different now we want to do the other branches down once we've set this branch structure the main structure and I'm using guide wires because I don't have fat enough wire this maybe fat enough wire out there but I doubt it so I'm going to pull this one down now don't worry about this little branch in the way that one can be bent and moved around I'm going to pull this one down that's the apex this one down and the back one down and see how we're looking I want that one to go around the side a bit, so what I might do is I might even wrap it around to the back one. 
I'm going to wrap it around here. We'll see. So I'll cut a piece off. So the main branches now are bent. They actually went okay. A lot of pressure on the one, but it went. So that's the main thing. So now what I want to do, oh, by the way, this is just tubing, plastic tubing to protect the branch. Um, if you haven't watched my guide wire videos before. So I tend to use mainly guide wires where I can. And then if I have to, Okay guys, so you can be quite ingenuity or whatever, but you can see I want that back and down. I don't want it right front and down. So what I might do is see this little stub that we created back here, wrap it around there first, then come back down to this screw. And that way it pulls it back at the same time. You know, just got to be inventive. Work with what you got. Like I say, I'd normally be pulling down on the pot, but because I'm tempted to repot this today, we're not. Uh, that screw's pretty small, got a pretty small head on it. And I've already wrapped a few times for the other branch with all that pressure. So I'm really happy with how these little screws are holding up in the trunk. Um, by the way, it doesn't damage the tree to have a screw in the trunk like that. Then in another year or whenever you take them off, you just unscrew them and that's it. It only puts a small little mark through the cambium and bark and that heals over. And as you can see here, where a big branch has been removed, these cedars actually cut us over really well. Okay, so that's those branches down. I want to pull this one down and the back one down. I'm going to try to use the front screw more now because we've got that really heavy branch and the front branch on that one little screw. I can put more screws if I need to, but we'll see how we go. I hope you guys can see. Might get back a bit now. No, you can still see the whole tree. Okay, once again, plastic tubing. Wrap around. Put it on this branch. I want it to bend down. Put it out as far as you can possibly put it because that gives it more leverage and puts less pressure on it back here and makes it easier to bend. A branch like that one there that was super hard to bend, if you if you have to, you can actually put a couple of loops of wire and put a Rio bar on there and use that as a leverage. But I didn't have to in that case, but you can. Okay, so we're going to bend that down. Okay, once you've got a couple of good big bends like that, don't get carried away and just pull it down thinking it's a little branch because you're still stressing it. So still massage it down. Slowly put more and more pressure on it. And you'll feel it relax and just sort of settle into its position. If you went to bend it that far straight away, without sort of flexing it a few times, there's a, there's a high likelihood you can just snap that branch clean straight away. So always keep that in mind. Massage it down. A bit like, if, you know, someone that can do the splits. If you go and do the splits dead cold straight out of bed, you'll probably do an injury. You warm up and get into it, you'll probably be okay. Mind you, I can't even touch my toes. <laughs> but you get, get the point. Okay, so this back one's got to come down. Probably okay to come straight down where it is. 
I don't really want to go to this bolt. It's got so much pressure on it already. Well, not bolt, screw. Let's see how we go. Let's try. What I might do is I might wrap around this front wire, front one first. So it's got less pressure on it. Go secure it to that. Let's do a single pass around the trunk itself. So it's going to have a little rub here, but I can put a little bit of rubber in there if I have to. We'll see how it goes for a while. I'll still put me plastic tubing up the top. There we go, so we don't have damage. For you regular viewers, you know, I know you obviously you've seen me do guide wires before, but I'm gonna, you probably haven't seen me do much pulling stuff down. And that's generally because I work on olives and evergreens and deciduous, and they all grow upright. But on this tree, I'm happy to pull stuff down and do some wiring. Doesn't mean I'm going to like to unwire it when the time comes, but I think it's needed. Now I'm just going to have a look at this. Okay. Not overly happy with where it's pulled that branch down to. Okay. Not overly happy. There's a small chance I could do. Oh, actually, I'll leave that one on. I want it to be over that way more. It's too far to the one side. If I spin it back to the front, you can see it's too far to that side. We need something back there. Certainly do. So let's let's take it off this wire at the front here. I'll cut it off because it's going to be plenty long enough. Which will be good because it means I can't now go around the trunk. And what I might do, I'm really hoping. So I'm massaging it. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'm just stretching it a few times. Just keep stretching it. I'm getting to its limit. It doesn't have any stress fractures here, but I can feel this branch hitting its limit. Certainly it's a big branch, heavy branch, and we're moving it a fair way from where it was. And it's putting a lot of pressure back at the base here. So just be super careful. Okay, that's as much as I dare to do. Just hoping. Damn it. I just let it. A lot of tension there and I just let it slip. Bugger. Okay, so I just want to wrap around. Let it slip again. Hold it tight, wrap it around a couple of times. Super lot of pressure there. Now from the front, you can see we got it more to the back. It's, I think the front's gonna be there. So it is sort of in the back there. I'd like it to be further over, but I just, I guess there's a possibility that we could pull it up to there. Yeah, let's try that as well. So we'll have a double guide wire on that one. One to pull it down, another one to pull it up there, which hopefully from the front will pull it that way. So you just gotta play around with it. And then once it's there, we can use other wires to move the foliage to fill in that spot anyway. But we just need to get it in the general spot, if you know what I mean. If you can get all the primary branches generally where you want them, then you can muck around with the wiring of the little branches later to get it, you know, definitely in the spot you want it. I'll tell you what, I'm going a good way to curing my bonsai flu today. I'm starting to feel quite good about 
working on this tree and problem solving. So I'm gonna put that on the branch there. Cut the excess off. Wrap around this main bit of what we got as dead wood now. Wrap around and then tie it off. And then we'll turn it back to the front and see what we got. So this is all with guide wire. Um, I hope you guys are sticking with me for this because there is a lot of stuff to learn. Um, and as you can see, it's just playing around. So one thing might not quite work, and then you try something different. It's just playing around. Now, it's possible of overdone this one down. I think it could actually no, actually that'd be right, because then I'll do a second layer up here where I maybe make one go up and fill in that area a bit. Okay, so you can see the guide wire anyway has pulled that one over now because I've got two. So one to there, one to there. We've got a guide wire pulling down that one, another one pulling down this one at the top. That main big one is getting pulled to here. Super lot of tension, you can nearly nearly play the guitar, not quite on that. And it's probably it for the guide wire. So let's get some wire on the actual tree now and get branches to where we want them. Um, still debating. I think we are slightly too low with that branch here. Gonna go up just a little bit, just a bit. Just a little bit too low. So you know, nothing's hard fast rule, you can play around. Yeah, that's probably better, because that fills in that area better. Definitely. And then we can wire all this out. So, let's wire out one branch live, and then the rest I'm going to do on a hyperlapse. And we'll see how we go. So first, guys, it's just hit 12 p.m. I'm going to get a beer, get a ton. And let's have some fun. Okay, guys. Time to ramp it up with a ton. Let's have some fun. Bloody beauty. Mmm. Just what the doctor ordered. Ah, oh, one thing I did forget to do is I don't actually want the apex of this tree to be bent over quite as much as it is. I actually want so you can see, you can find points to um, guide wire the tree, even if you don't go to the pot. You can always find something. You go around a gin, go around a screw that you put in. You can put a screw on a branch up the trunk here, out here on a tr branch, and then pull one across there. You can do whatever you like. But anyway, without getting carried away, back to where we were. I want to actually pull this one a little bit more upright and back this way towards the gin area. Um, by the way, the gin area I will do with lime and sulfur, but not 
now because it's so wet and sappy I'll let it dry um, but what I want to do is I just want to bring the new apex up closer to the old one so that it sort of incorporates it and it's not just this bit of dead wood stuck out in the middle of nowhere okay I don't want to smother it with foliage but I don't want it to be miles away from it so let's do that like I say this is not my normal style I don't normally go for these more bonsai this is what I call more bonsai style and well in a way the cedar really does lend itself to that sort of style whereas a lot of the Australian natives not really they're all upright and sort of umbrella canopies and whatever so there we go we got the apex closer to there and then what we can do is use wire to bend things down and out because I should have strong enough wire for all of that and basically now wire out the whole tree so I'm just trying to work out what I should wire for you guys because I want to show you one full branch but I don't want it to be you know an hour because it does take a damn long time to really wire something out I mean this branching here would probably be a good demo and so would here but then if I did this front one here it would be simpler for you guys to understand okay and a lot quicker on the video dilemmas okay guys well I've decided why not it's gonna be a big video now like I've said in the past it doesn't make it any harder for me just have another sip apart from the editing it's still going to take me the same amount of time so we're going to do this main big branch here it's going to be a key branch with a few different layers and stuff in it so let's wire out this whole branch and then I'll wire out the rest of the tree and we'll take a look after it's all done so let's do this branch okay so it can it could take a while gonna be some editing but that's good let's get into it yeah I don't have massive wire um, generally because I don't do a lot of wiring anymore okay so we got a few different sizes a little bit fatter thinner this just seems to be all aluminium. I have had copper in the past. Either or. Slightly back bigger. I've also had some... This is just electrical cable. Um, I think some old jump... Not jumper leads, but... Anyway, some really heavy copper. And... Might save that for this big one at the front here. The rest, I think, is not going to need crazy. A good way to tell, right? All right, let's get to this branch. We're doing this one, aren't we? Is that correct? That is correct. Right, let's let's wire it out. A good way to tell whether your wire is fat enough. If you push on the branch. And your wire bends first like just then your wire is not fat enough if I get this fatter wire push on the branch and the branch starts to bend like there 
this wire is just fat enough. It's actually on a slimmer because it was trying to bend the wire, but it just bent the branch. So it looks like I'm on the market for some fatter wire. So anyway, I'll have to have a look. So what you want to do is you want to, when you wire, you want to wire, because we've got the primary branches set, we don't have to go around the trunk. But when you wire, you want to wire two alternating branches together every time. Okay, we're not caring too much about where they go. Although if you're twisting it, you do want to have the twist of the wire in the same direction you want to twist the branch. So here, we want to twist this branch probably around like that, which means we want to actually curl the wire around that way. So when you twist it, it doesn't unwrap. If you were to go the other way, and then twist it, it would actually unwrap the wire and then it wouldn't hold as well. Um, I'll try and bring you guys a bit closer for that branch while I wire it. So you are a fair, fair way away. It's probably not bad. Okay guys, so let's do some opposite branches. Here we got these two that are opposite to each other. So what you want to do is go across, leave maybe a third extra to allow for the coils. We know we want to wire this one that way because we're going to bend it down that way. So let's do that. Just give it one twist there. Then we want to grab the wire, twist it around the main branch, and then do some twisting. And always support, as you're bending this, always use the other hand to move along the wire and help support move branches you got it it's like a i guess you do it by feel in a way but you're moving branches and helping support the branch as you wire so here you know we'll wrap that around i'm using my other hand to help and fingers to help move branches strip some needles out the way help support because you're trying to wrap the wire around the branch so you've got to help support the branch, move branches. And I'm not an expert at wiring because, to be honest, I don't wire that much. But, you know, this is the fundamentals. You've got to use your other hand to help support, help wrap. Some people muck around with pliers doing this, but to be honest, if you did that, unless you got, unless you're retired, it's an absolutely ridiculous thing to do because it takes you friggin' hours. Take you a long time. Okay, so once we got it like that, what we can do is we can move this branch into place. Now from the front, I want that branch to come down, fill in a big void down there. So what we're going to do, bend it down carefully, very carefully, twisting it as well because it was upright foliage, we're twisting it to make it a bit flatter. Okay. And then we're going to just curl it up at the end. Now from the front, we're going to start to see that foliage through that negative gap there. I will massage it a little bit further, but I don't want to break the branch. 
and I am putting a fair old kink in it already from where it was. Luckily these are actually quite a flexible tree. And then this one here, I actually want to bend it out and around here to create a separate little layer here. And that one can help involve, get involved here, covering that area. So I might bend it more to the back. And now we've got to set the other two branches here. So let's do that. So you can see that other branch hanging down there now. And it didn't spring back at all, which means we used the right gauge of wire. Just got to work out what we're doing with this branch here because I think we can incorporate it there. Or you could maybe even go a separate layer again up here. It's possible. I think we will. So let's get that same wire out again. Although we are running out of that. So I might try this slightly weaker wire. Yep, looks like it should hold. And what we'll do is because it's going to be hard to get in there, I'm not going to leave the roll on this time. I'm just going to guess the length. Just check it. Okay, we're going to use more. We're going to let you know leave a bit more than the length of the branch again. Always using your hand to help support the branch. So you're wrapping the wire around the branch and not using the branch to wrap the wire. You almost try and twist it around the branch without really annoying the branch too much. Now with these guide wires, it is a little bit trickier, I have to be honest. But I did want the main structure set main branching set so that I knew where I was going with all these secondary and tertiary branching okay so you what you're doing is you're working your way out you're going from the fattest branches first and then working your way out to the thinnest when you wire you're always supporting where you're wrapping you don't want to break stuff off and that's another reason why we do that big clean up at the start because it makes your wiring job so much easier. You can see where you're going, you don't squash stuff too much like you would if you hadn't have cleared it. And like I say, I was just going to do hyperlapse for this but... I don't know, I thought, I don't do many wiring videos, so I thought maybe you guys could get something out of it. So, you can see here, I wrapped that branch that way. And when I twist this branch, I want it to sit here. And to twist that branch, I'm actually going to twist it in the same direction that I wrapped it. Which actually makes the wraps of the wire tighter which then actually support the branch even more so we're going to twist it in that direction support the branch even more go on to the limit of the branch again and as you can see it held i didn't have to do anything else and now you can see you've got another level of foliage here and this one out the front here well I think we're just going to bend that one down, to be honest. Down and have it so that eventually it's going to cross the trunk a bit. Just to create some extra pads. So eventually you're going to, every branch is going to be a multi-layered pad. Each branch is not going to be a single pad, pad, pad. Every branch is going to be multi-layered. So this one's going to be here. This one at the back will be there. Front down here. 
So there, 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 and there. So you're going to have one, two, three, four, five pads on this one primary branch. And that creates good, um, I don't know what you'd say, thickness or fullness to the branch structure. But, you know, that's how I like to do it. And, by the way, I do, when I was doing my juniper videos, when I did junipers, they were done exactly the same to create fullness. Okay. So, like I say, this video could end up being quite a, quite a long one. Um, that's all good. Now, I've got a problem. This wire is too fat, and I'll try and find some thinner stuff. Well, actually, we've still got this one big fat one here. Okay, guys, so this fat one here, that you can see, we've wired that branch to this branch, okay? And you can see we've got the bends in them. They stayed. Everything's perfect. This, These two here wired together. They stayed all perfect. Didn't bounce back at all. Now you can see this branch here. There's nothing to wire that onto. If I was to just put a piece of wire here, all that will happen, This, if I stop the wire here, it's just going to flop around. There's nothing to anchor it on. So what you have to do in this situation is still, just trying to gauge the fatness of that, go slightly fatter. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm actually still going to have to wrap from one of these anchor points back here along this branch and then onto here. And then that way when you bend here the wire along here will support it and it will stay wherever you want. If I was to stop it here like I say you would bend it like that and it would just flop back everywhere. So the main thing you want is the branch is the wire that goes on the branches to have an anchor point which holds them in the right spot there's no point putting wire on if it's not going to hold your branch where you want it so what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap around there uh, i'll come from underneath okay and i'm going to wrap around this branch so that becomes our anchor point and then I'm going to chop to around about the length that I think that I need if I waste a bit I'm not overly concerned this stuff is pretty cheap considering everything else in life pretty cheap so you just want to be able to support wrap your way around now, I think I've actually cut this a bit short, or it'll be very close. Okay. Now, I like to wrap with my right hand and place it. Place the wire, move the branches, and help wrap the wire with my left hand. Now, I didn't quite leave myself enough. It was so super close it's going to do the job i think but i could have had one more wrap so you talk another two centimeters of wire would have been perfect but not to be so um, just trying to work out what i want to do with it i think i want to bring it in in to start and then maybe back out to finish no, that looks ugly. It's okay if it looks ugly. Um, not the final spot, I mean, but when you first start moving it, because you've got wire on there, you can keep moving it around. And in actual fact, once I've finished styling this, I can come back to it days, weeks, whatever later, and just play around with it and move branches. So we're up to that stage. So this fatter wire now is becoming irrelevant for that, for this tree. So 
it might be time to move on to the thinner wire. I just want to check. It'll be okay for some. I'll do some branches with this wire and then I'm going to have to go even thinner because these cedars seem quite um, flexible. Okay, so like I say, it's going to be a long video. I'm really sorry if you guys want to see the finished product. You'll have to fast forward. I'm just trying to do a really detailed wiring of this tree. So here we're going around the fatter branch here and we're not going around the thin little branches at the moment we're just doing the fatter. When I get to the end I also like to just curl the end back on itself just so you don't have pokey out bits everywhere. Okay so that's gone along that branch along the secondary branch here and then out to here so we're on to the tertiary branches once again always supporting as much as you can the branch when you're doing the wire around it here we've gone out onto a very thin branch with still a fat wire so you have to be super careful about how you wrap that wire around the branch Okay, so I'm just doing the fatter ones now with this wire. Let's go again. Okay, I don't want to... I mean, I'm not a very fast wire anyway. I could go a little bit faster than this, but I'm trying to go nice and slow so you guys get a good idea. So you want to follow the same bends that you had before on the wire. You don't want to cross the wire too much if you can help it. If you do cross the wire, it's not the end of the world as long as the wire is still wrapping around the branch and doing what it needs to do. But it does look a lot better and generally the neater the wire looks, the better it works. So try and do it neat. <coughs> I know you're not going to be showing a tree like this. This is just... <coughs> Sorry, it's still getting over me a little bit of a cold. This is, you know, development stage, but you do, like I say, the neater you have the wire, the better it holds. I wonder why also whether I had that bonsai flu is I did a little bit much bonsai. I did A few videos that was okay but then I also had the stress of doing a podcast first ever podcast that was stressful then I did a YouTube video with bonsai supplier and that was pretty stressful because I'm a fairly introverted sort of a bloke really you know in these videos I like to have a bit of fun quite often but in real life quite an introvert so it was a real you know step out of my comfort zone to do all that stuff and maybe I just felt like I needed a break after all of that you know YouTube and podcast because like I say this really is stepping out of my comfort zone my gut feeling was to say no I'm not doing it but you know saying no doesn't get you anywhere. But no, Sam. Suck it up and go and do some. Go and do something out of your comfort zone and see how you go. What's the worst that's going to happen? I don't have to watch it or listen to it if I don't have to. And all in all, I think it went pretty well. Scary for me, but. I think all in all, they went pretty well. So now we've done some of the stronger secondary branches. Now we have to go to even smaller wire. We're almost done with these branches, but not quite. That's why I say I'm not a massive wiring fan because it is 
very involved. So we got another lot of thinner wire again, as you can see. I keep my stuff really neat and clean to make life easier for myself. You don't want to let it get all mess and tangled up. So let's find out what we're going to wire now. Some of these small, small little branches may not need wire. Let's wire this tip here. I'll wire some of the ones that I know need wire. And as you get thinner wire, it's quite a lot easier to place on. Try not to catch too many needles underneath your wire because, you know, it's quite likely going to snap them off and wreck them. Um, and when you're going out on these tiny thin branches, I mean, this is ridiculous to me. I never, I never wire stuff this thin normally, but there you go. Okay, so we're going to wire now the ones that I know need wire. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving stuff into what I think will be a final position. And if it all seems good and happy and done, I'll leave it. If there's a couple of little bits in the wrong place, I'll have to put some possibly even finer wire or just be super careful with this fine wire already and wire them out. Um, pretty hard when you get to the fine stuff like this. Like I say, I normally don't wire it, but um, today is an exception. I thought I would do a wiring video, really highly style a tree, something different. And so, you know, I've got a whole day ahead of me, so this can be a really long video, no worries at all. Okay. Now you can see I'm using my snips to snip the wire. You can or you can't, it's up to you whether you do that. Um, it's only aluminium wire, so it's very, very soft. And then, see this little small branch here? I'm dead certain it will need some wire on it, so I'm gonna do a wrap onto this sec or tertiary branch here, just a single wrap. I hope you guys can see it's getting very fiddly. And then I'm going to do a wrap up this very thin branch, but supporting the wire with my other little fingers the whole way up. And Hopefully the branch is just placed in between all the wraps that I did with my fingers without actually stressing that little tiny, tiny branch out. And same thing here. I'm going to do the same again on this one. That's why highly styling a tree is very, very time consuming. Some of those guys that do those massive trees and they do every little tip right out you know they might do it for four days three days but they are highly skilled guys and they are still taking three days if i even had a go at that because i'm pretty hopeless really i'm still learning if i had even a go at that that would be i'd take bloody two weeks i reckon to do that those guys something else you know highly highly de dedicated guys Hat goes off to them for all their efforts, but for me, that's why I like my deciduous and my evergreen because quite often clip and grow is all you need. And I love my clip and grow, but I also love the effect of putting on some wire and singer. You know, a fairly styled tree right off the bat.
You don't have to wait years like a deciduous tree for a result. You can bend everything how you want it now. And have a, not a finished tree, but something that looks bonsai-ish right off the bat. So we're still wiring out this branch. I don't know how long we're into this wiring episode, but it'd be probably honing in on half hour. Going around and around, supporting all these little twigs. They are, they are seriously twigs. These, you know, there's no structure or body to these little branches. They are seriously twigs. But if I want to be able to manipulate the whole tree, I have to wire everything out like like I'm doing. And once I finish this, you know, I'm nearly quarter way through the tree, so. getting there Wrapping it around, trying to keep it pretty neat, trying not to cross too many wires over. Um, no, and that's pretty well it. I just just having a look here. Okay, I think we're getting close to wiring out everything here. Um, I'll just put a little bit of wire on these ones here at the front. It's going to be super hard because it's behind a guide wire and super, super fine branches. So get yourself in a good position where you can help hold and manipulate the wire. This one here is not overly pretty. I didn't have a lot to work with here. Very, very little fine branching. All right. So, pretty happy with that being fully wired. So now we've got to get to the front here and decide how we want these branches. So you want to basically make it look full but at the same time have nice level pads and definition between the pads. So we want to make it look full, maybe stand the tips up if we can, depending on how you went with your wiring and how far out you went. Stand the tips up if you can on your branching, like so. This is where it's critical too to leave your block in the final planting angle because if you don't, then when you plant it, everything's going to be wrong that you just wired out. So, here we go. Coming down here. Didn't quite wire that tip properly, so it's mucking around on me. So you can see that branch is pretty well wired out. You can tweak it a bit as we go. Tweak it a bit later. Don't get too crazy with tweaking it though, because eventually you will start to damage some of the structure in there. Some of the fine stuff. Okay. Now, 
we want to go to this one here wire this here like this have a little separate pad there um, there's a little bit of branch here we'll cut that off don't need that I think we need to come forward with this one and back with this top one. So if I can come forward more and have it sitting over there, maybe come down a little bit more and then start twisting it back up. As you can see, if you've wired it properly, you can re manipulate every single branch you've got to remember too you got to take this bloody wire off and that's where me and wire are not happy with each other <laughs> we hate each other taking it off is actually worse putting it on you know at least you can style it gives you something to do taking it off is a thankless task and the tree looks the same when you finish just without wire whereas putting the wire on is not a thankless task because you get to bend and manipulate branches and see your you know your design of the tree as you go and then what you can do once you've done that is you can come along here and pull all the downward needles off just to make it look a bit cleaner underneath don't go crazy on it because we're already running on minimal foliage here um, no idea what time of year I should be doing this but you know I live in Australia so our winters are that mild it doesn't overly need a lot of strength to get through our winters here but if you're in a really crazy winter spot now might not be the time to do it so as you can see let's pull these off and you'll see the difference just from pulling the bottom ones off how much cleaner and nicer your new little pads are and your new pads are a bit sparse but it actually doesn't look out of place once you um, once you make these sparse little pads as long as you have it over the whole tree the same it looks quite normal if you were to have one sparse pad and then a really thick dense one that's where you can run into trouble it looks funny for one doesn't look realistic and two the tree will then weaken off the weak one and put all its effort into the strong one that you left heaps of stuff on so you want to basically strip the tree back to the same strength over the whole thing as far as the needles um, so that you don't end up with that problem so here we want to come down and up twist this one might have to stand up twist this one we're creating a pad out the back Come down first and up on the tips and over time these pads will get denser and fuller and nicer just want to crank it a little bit fatter or fatter when I say more fanned out rather than it was thin like that I've just made what I said fatter but just more fanned out just to give it more, you know, visual strength in that pad because that's, a main, that's going to be a main one at the back of the tree it's going to be a really main focal branch so from the front it's probably not quite visible enough From the front you can sort of see that pad now front's you know 
going to be around there somewhere, but you can see that pad going in there. And obviously in time, it's going to strengthen and get fatter. And then we're going to have this pad here after when we wire it. But that's pretty well, that one wired out. Um, got a few little branches here. And as you can see, everything I've moved has stayed means I've used at least strong enough gauge in some situations probably too strong but that's all right as long as you put too fat a wire on carefully it's better than not having fat enough because at least you move it once it stays there and you're not then coming back and removing and removing branches if you have too fine a wire which causes you to keep coming back and removing it that can actually cause more damage than putting on a strong enough wire to start with so I hope all this makes sense like I say if you really want to get advice from an expert don't watch me I'm just a backyard hack having a go and that's fine and I don't do a lot of wiring so I'm probably completely wrong in how I'm doing it, but this is how I do it, and it seems to work. So as you can see, this is our first structured branching. As you can see, it's still a bit messy, you know, I could take off more needles underneath, and make it look flatter, but you start to get to the point where you weaken the tree too much and you could kill it so I'm happy with that and I'm not going to take it any further and over time these pads will develop um, and hopefully be something pretty nice I actually think I'll go back further with this one forward more with that one what I mean you come back and look at it and you decide you like something else better it's just how it is all right guys I'm gonna wire the rest and position the branches so I'll, get, I'll bring it back to here I'll give it a, a little bit of a spin so you can see what that branch looks like to the rest of the branching. Go. Now I'm going to get on to the rest of them. And see how we go. Okay, cheers. Hey, how you going guys? Welcome back. Done the um, wiring of the whole tree, the guide wires, everything is done. Um, I'd like to make it a little bit more compact, but you know, the apex is where it is and the trunk's fairly thin, which is why I'd like to make it more compact. Um, if I had a fatter trunk, it would look better. 
but it is what it is and like I say I'm just a hack out in the shed having a go and I'm sure that's how most people are just mucking around having a go so hopefully you guys can relate to working on something like this um, pretty happy with how it's turning out now I'll give you a quick spin now okay Okay, so that's the quick spin front somewhere there. I don't know, 100%, somewhere there. <coughs> but I thought what I'll do now is let's try and repot it. I've decided let's try and repot it. There's not a lot of foliage on. Um, I've taken a lot off. And it was extremely vigorous beforehand so I'm guessing it should really push back hard and the pot that I'm going to put it in I'm going to try to take out minimal roots it is a bit smaller for sure but I'm going to take out minimal roots just try and compact them in there and see how we go because I just really want to get it into this pot that I have as an idea and I reckon it'll look pretty cool in there so Patience is normally bonsai, but today for me, let's get in a pot. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get a pot out. I'll just go and get the pot actually while you're there. Just hang on, I'm grabbing the pot. This pot, I was walking around my parents' yard. Some of you guys might have seen this. Walking around my parents' yard and down the back of their block where they'd thrown this away I don't know what it was for but it was a bit of coral it looks like coral like a limestone coral anyway there's a quite a big recessed hole in here where I can put a lot of roots a lot of soil a couple of tie down points and the holes go right through the bottom I'm not sure how it'll go as far as getting it back out because the roots will want to grab in there but the thing is if I tried to smooth it out I may well wreck one wreck it or two if I filled it up with a bit of putty in some of them holes I'd make the pot too small so do you know what I'm just going to leave it out here and wing it and we're going to put it in there today I think so let's get it all ready I'm going to go and clean, you've seen me clean the roots before, but basically I'm just going to pull this apart. I'll do it on camera, but it's going to be, it's just a massive video already. We may have to do two parts, part one, part two. See how we go, because massive video. Okay. So yeah, some sort of a cedar. Theodora, Theodora, something or other. We'll just get this stuff out of the way. Let's have a look in here. What do we got? So, got my guide wires and my screws. I've got to be careful with that. It looks like I've got roots around the place. A lot of them could be from weeds, but there's not a lot of weeds in this pot. So, that's it, you know. Let's let's take it apart, get the hose, high pressure hose out, clean it out, and I'm gonna see you guys when this is cleaned out and back in the shed ready to pot up. Okay guys, well the roots are a fair tangled mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of any crossing roots for now. Pull them out. And see if we can work our way. I think it's been in a pot a long time. I actually found a tag in the bottom, repotted. Uh, 
2012 it said so it's been nine years since its last repot probably I mean it may have been done since it's just at the tag in the bottom that's what it said so Go. I'll just cut some of these side ones off to hopefully eventually show a better root structure but as you can see it's got a lot of radial roots like it's been trapped in a pot for a long time um, and we're just going to clean it up a little bit today I'm not going to go crazy on it because you know we're getting it into a whole new pot today and it's already had all this other work done to it so we do not want to go crazy and stress it out too much but I will work my way down this root system a little bit okay guys well I've played around with the roots way more than I thought I had to and well it's pretty well how I'm going to plant it something like that Okay guys, I put a bit of wire in here from underneath and that way I can tie it in the pot. I'm going to put a fair bit of soil in the bottom there where it can sit onto. Okay. And then we're going to get the tree. Beautiful looking tree. I'm gonna find the front exactly because now's the time to do that. And we're gonna actually, I think we need more. Around the edges. Be interesting. This is a learning curve for me as far as repotting into a rock, and also aftercare will be critical. And we'll see how I go. This might be the well, I did kill a Maria once from repotting it wrong, but otherwise, this might be the first major tree I kill from a bad repot. We'll see how we go. I'm gonna screw it in there. Pretty happy with how that's sitting in there. So that's the front. Actually, I don't know if you guys are wait are back enough. No, I just had it on the bloody rock. Sam. You are a clown, mate. Okay, so guys, I'm happy with the front there. And how much it's leaning forward. It's pretty good. Probably go back slightly. I'll corkscrew it in at the back a bit. Okay, we'll wiggle these wires in and around I think I'll do it to the back I'll tie it across the back because we don't want to wreck the roots at the front just want to get some flies Sam, you are a clown. A real, real clown. I got my gene flies right here. There yeah, I was looking for flies, and here I got my gene flies. So, the idea now is there will be a lot of soil here for the tree to grow in. And the soil that it's got to grow in is fine and plenty. 
The risk at the moment is how many roots I had to take off this tree to get it into this stone or pot or whatever you want to call it. A bit of coral. So the risk is how much I had to take off to get it in there. Once it grows in there, there's a lot of roots. Way, way more than you think there would be. It's just a matter of re-establishing now. So, you know, unfortunately I'd take off more than I thought I would have to. Um, which is always the way. You always think, oh yeah, should be fine. Pull really tight and then wind in without pressure. And then, as you can see, she's nice and strong in there. Probably lifted up by the tree, yep. Which is a good sign. So she's in there. So let's nip off what's left. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do, now that it's in there like that, I'm gonna pour some more soil in the front here. Everywhere. You know, this is a pretty crazy repot for me. I've never done a repot like this. More at the back here. Let's hope, let's hope I know what's going on. And then, what I'm going to do, now that we've done that repot, Push everything in nice and strong. It's crazy. This is crazy to think that this can survive on this little bit of rock. Might have overdone it, guys. Might have overdone it. Like I say, I'm a backyard bonsai guy. Not, not normally a how-to. You know, I've got some how-to videos where I'm quite confident that I, everything's going to be fine. But, you know, this job here, this is a risk. Um, it's a big job doing this to a tree. Putting it in here. So what I'm going to do now is put some moss on it so that the water... The soil can't wash away from the roots. Got some good moss on there, we should be fine. And then as it gets established, we can start to expose some of these surface roots. But yeah, pretty crazy repot. I would have loved to have got the whole root ball inside the hole, but this tree is just too big. I would have had to get a, a little juniper or something like that if I wanted to do that. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Everything in life is a risk. And some risks are worth doing and some aren't. And if this one pays off, it'll be pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to moss it and I'll give you a spin at the end after it's mossed. Cheers. get this thing in this uh, pot not too bad lost a few roots but we'll see what happens I think it'll be okay there's a big pocket of soil that it can grow into with its roots and you know be pretty cool when it does pretty cool um, Big video, big video. So we did a lot of work, We've done wiring, trimming, branch selection, selecting the front, everything. This whole video, this had a lot of stuff in it. It's been very involved. 
The repot I kept to a bit of a minimum, but you know, a repot's a repot. Try not to take too many roots off, but at the same time you gotta fit it in, don't you? So I'll put some moss up. I'm gonna give it a good soak after this video is finished. And let's give it a spin on the way out. Okay, guys, giving it a water carefully with a hose so it's not washing away all the moss and the soil. And she's looking pretty sweet. I reckon she'll be fine. Looks like she's gonna be a great tree. Seriously, great tree. And that's it. Cheers. Um, but anyway, cheers very much, thanks very much, thanks for watching, please like, share, subscribe, um, if you share the video, it really does help me out, um, comments, everything, you know, it's all great, just love it, so thank you very much guys, for all your support in the past. Hope to release some more regular videos now. Um, really enjoyed this video today. It was really good. So let's give you a spin on the way out. Cheers and tell your mates about the channel.